Good evening, afternoon, morning, night, whenever you find a way to see this or listen to it. This is Omar again from the hardware slash, I guess, Between the Strides podcast network. You know, we're starting our socials again and, we, and we're putting hardware pod in the socials for TikTok and Instagram, but that's neither here nor there. I have a guest, an old friend of the podcast uh, and huge Jacksonville State fan. We have a uh, Brandon, Brandon Owens from around the A Sun. And also, uh, I forget, I forget what the side is you do for, uh, for Jacksonville State, but I just know you're Cocky Nation. Cocky Nation, right? Cocky Nation. So, Brandon, I guess, um, I guess if you can just introduce yourself again, tell us what you've been up to and we'll, we'll kick it off. So, as he said, I'm Brandon Owens. I am a co host of the Around the A Sun podcast and the Cocky Nation podcast. Um, yeah, I've I've just ever since school ended, I just completed my first year of graduate school. Um, so I've been working my butt off ever since. And yeah, it, I think this week is finally catching up to me because I'm battling a sinus infection right now. So I think my body was like, uh, you it's time for you to kind of slow down just a little bit. It's good. Just a little bit, but not too much not appear in this podcast. So I'm grateful for that, Brandon. <laughs> um, but yeah, so um, of course, Jacksonville State going to Division One soon. I mean, or sorry, not Division One. I don't want to be that guy. Going to FBS soon. Yeah. Um, and uh, they're completing their final season of FCS this year, and they got a couple of huge neutral site games. They have the FCS kickoff, which I guess it's fitting that in their last year of FCS, you know, ESPN mm-hmm. events chooses them for that against. It's kind of curious that they chose them against the. Uh, 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 excuse me, Stephen F. Austin. Almost said Sam Houston State. Sorry, Stephen S. Stephen F. Austin. I know. Yeah, don't want to. You almost ruffled some family. feathers there. I know. I did. I know. Yeah, almost against Stephen F., against Stephen F. Austin, and then one more that emerged lately, and that is their game against North Alabama at Toyota Field, home of the Rocket City Trash Pandas. And I gotta say, I'm on the fence about a minor league baseball team names. You know, like. I like the creativity of some of those, but it's just like some of them, it's just too far, honestly. But uh, that's a discussion for another time. So, uh, Brandon, what do you think about this uh, this neutral site game uh, initially? Um, Initially, I liked the idea, but me being a band guy, I'm like, where in the world are you going to put almost a thousand members for, for both bands total? Where in the heck are you going to put them in that stadium? That stadium is way too small. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, I guess but many ballparks weren't weren't built with uh band considerations in mind, of course. You know, that's that's def- that's needless to say. Uh I gotta say, as a former trumpet player for eight <laughs> years, I never never was in marching band. Uh, but I mean I, I, I respect the uh, considerations for band, like the band point of view on this podcast. I think that's something that may set us apart from other football podcasts if you want to give us a listen to any uh, any uh, marching band enthusiasts. But that is a great point too. Um, I'm sure they'll figure it out, whether it be in the outfield stands, it'll, I feel, I feel like it'll probably be in the stands where they're not going towards the end zone, because again, something that the local papers mentioned, I'm not sure if it was mentioned on the press release, but these teams are only going to play one way of football, a la 2010, Illinois, Illinois versus Northwestern at Wrigley field. So definitely a spectacle to see even for that. Yeah. They mentioned that, that it's, it's just one way football, which I would have thought like, uh, I actually mapped out, well, not really mapped out, but listed out the dimensions and orientation of every ballpark that's hosted football in the past like decade or so. And I mean, Toyota field has similar dimensions to a lot of those, uh, a lot of those ballparks. So, I mean, I'm kind of curious as to like why they have to do that, but again, it's intriguing losers walk. It's a throwback to third grade. Uh Uh-huh. Well, another thing I'm pretty excited about this. I mean, Huntsville is a middle point for both of these schools. Like not only that, but you have alumni from both schools in the Huntsville area and close to the Huntsville area, whether it be Southern Tennessee, Central Alabama, uh, Georgia's within driving distance as well. Mississippi for most UNA people is within driving distance. Like, I I mean, this stadium is going to be going to be packed I don't know what they're going to do with like behind the stands because there's a high school in Alabama that uses um I think it's it's the Hoover uh Hoover Met um down there uh Hoover High School uses it and they they pack out almost every Friday night um and they use the the outfield behind the away stands like um, for band warm up, so I would imagine that's where the bands are going to warm up here at Toyota Field. Um, I'm pretty sure there's going to be 
like children running around, not paying attention to the game, playing their own games of football behind the away stands. Um, so I'm, I'm very interested to see how, how many people come to this, uh, come to this game because it's at least going to be 6,000 fans. I mean, that stadium seats, I want to say 8,000. I want to say, so it wouldn't surprise me if it goes almost to 9,000, maybe 10,000. So it wouldn't surprise me if this is a completely sold out game. Yeah. I mean, me neither too, I guess. Like, I think this is one of the, either the second, if not the first neutral site meeting in this series. Um, you know, I, I looked that up courtesy of the, the playing grounds of college of college football, the huge Kindle, uh, yeah. uh, the huge book, the huge, like, uh, I guess, what do you call it? compendium of a uh, of, of football of yeah football okay. stadiums that have had a college football game but um yeah i expect you to be sold out to be honest with you because i mean if i'm if i'm not mistaken i would assume that jacksonville state fans travel well you know successful program with uh, a lot of schools in their i guess conference blueprint or i guess used to in terms of the ovc mm-hmm. um so i assume they're going to travel well and i mean i don't mean any shade towards north alabama fans but it's been a while since, like, I guess the glory, the D2 glory days of North Alabama. So I assume that stadium is going to be mostly red um, for the most part, too. No, no shade at all. I mean, uh, I, I mean, yeah, what's, what's your take on that then? Um, so you're correct about JSU fans traveling well. Like, take, take our first game, for example, the, uh, the game against Stephen F. Austin in the Crampton Bowl. This will be our fourth time going. And the past three times we've always chosen to sit on the away side. Um, and that away side has just been completely packed each time. Um, when we played Chattanooga the first time, when we played NCA and T the second time, and when we played UAB this past year, um, that entire away side was completely full of just red and white. So I imagine JSU fans are going to travel well for this game, especially with it being one of uh, JSU's most storied rivalries um, from the band perspective, as well as the football side of things as well. Um, But I will say with this being so close to UNA's campus, I'd imagine there's going to be more purple and gold than people think. Um, Like I said, Huntsville, if anything, there's more UNA people in Huntsville than there is JSU people. So I would imagine there's going to be more purple and gold at this game than what most people think. Okay, yeah, I mean, me included, because I just would have thought, you know, Jacksonville State, very established too. Uh, it's funny you mentioned that the, I guess, the UAB game from last season on the Wednesday night, very weird situation. But, uh, I mean, I'm surprised here that they traveled well, but, I mean, that's just a testament to how dedicated the fan base is. I mean, if they're willing to travel to Montgomery, which, I, I mean, that's at least an hour away. Um, Montgomery hour, is hour and a half, yeah, and something half. like okay. that. Yeah, from uh, from the Crampton Bowl, which I mean, geez, I mean, the trip to the stadium is, is worth it. I mean, in the first place, even if it's even if it's a Wednesday, love the Crampton Bowl, great stadium too. Um, but yeah, so okay, I mean, that's that that's good to hear. I guess that the I guess the crowd will be pretty much even. So, uh, I guess in terms of the rivalry, do you see JSU continuing the rivalry in some I guess capacity? Like we're kind of seeing this problem too in terms of, from an FCS perspective with the Battle of the Piney Woods with uh, Sam Houston State and um, Stephen F. Austin, where this year will probably be the last ever Battle of the Piney Woods. And then if they do have it, it probably won't be a neutral site game, but a paycheck game um, held at Sam Houston State's campus. So I guess, where do you see the future of this rivalry going? Um, I think it's going to be upheld. I just don't think it's going to be an every year thing since UNA, like, like since UNA has moved up to the FCS, we've played them every year, which has been nice. <clears throat> excuse me but i mean since we're making the move to fbs and conference usa like it's it's going to be a little bit harder to kind of it, it it would get very boring for for our fcs opponent every year to be una um i would imagine ksu would be thrown in the mix maybe utc but i have my own opinions about all three of those teams which we might get into a little bit later i don't know um but yeah, it'll it'll be mostly a paycheck game, and it won't happen every year. Um, but the the fire from the rivalry should still be there. Absolutely. I mean, I, I guess like now with JSU moving up to FBS, even if it is Conference USA, um, there's that big brother, little brother type element to the rivalry now. I guess I guess um, I'm not sure how many meetings there were when a uh, UNA was in D two, but I mean, I guess. 
if they met a lot or a few times that it's kind of resurrected, I guess. I, th- I can think of seven times in like off the top of my head okay. that we met, but I'm, okay. I, we didn't meet every year. Okay. Yeah. I mean, shoot, I guess um, the small Renaissance, you know, was, was something that I guess we should have treasured or j- our fans of both schools should have treasured. Uh, but yeah, like, I mean, I see it being an occasional thing, nothing on this level of being a neutral site game, of course, because even though it's not unheard of for um, FBS schools to play FCS schools on a neutral site, I remember I think in 2012, West Virginia played James Madison at FedEx Field for whatever reason. JSU uh, UAB at the Crampton Bowl last year. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. I mean, well, that that was like more of a, of a weirder circumstance that kind of made sense because I know uh, UAB was like waiting for protective stadium to be uh to be completed so i mean their uh their faux home game slash fcs kickoff was um was at the crampton bowl but uh yeah, yeah. A- again a weird situation all around you know a little bit of early season wednesday night uh conference u.s action uh not in exactly yeah. action but uh, um but yeah a weird situation all around but yeah like it's not unheard of but it's very rare that um i guess F- fcs fbs games are played uh at a neutral site which i guess uh, poses a question which we talked about beforehand uh who do you think could replace jsu as una's rival and uh or maybe they're i guess they're a compatriot in uh in the toyota field game in the future um so sadly i think this is the last year that this might happen unless una can make a deal with kennesaw state uh that's the only other one that i can see kind of making this a a every year thing for the asun um, because KSU would have to travel from Atlanta to Huntsville. UNA would only have to travel about an hour down Highway 72 to get to Huntsville. So that would be perfect. Uh, in order to keep this neutral site game, that would be the ideal rivalry that UNA would need. Um, and KSU for that matter, since technically we are a bigger rival and we consider KSU a bigger rival than UNA but there's so much history that we can't just throw UNA to the side. Uh, but um, another team that I think could that could replace the rivalry of JSU for UNA, um, and it won't be held at uh, Toyota Field, but it's an old Gulf South D2 rival um, from like the late 90s, early 2000s, and that's Central Arkansas. There is so much history, and you can ask Will Seiler about this. Apparently, he cried at a D2 playoff game that was hosted at Central Arkansas against UNA. Uh, There is so much history between those two uh, uh, storied programs. Uh, Very successful at the D2 level, might I add. Um, So if UNA decides to replace the JSU rivalry with KSU, it could be held at Toyota field. But if they go with a familiar foe in central Arkansas, it it's not, there's not going to be a neutral site for that. Well, that's a good point. So I figure we're talking about this beforehand. I mean, I I don't have much knowledge of the Gulf South conference uh, conferences, former members. I had a feeling it was uh, central Arkansas. Uh, My my second guess would have been uh, Austin P. But, uh, but yeah, that could still be a big rival for UNA. We don't know yet. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like we don't know. I mean, yeah, yeah. We we don't know yet. I mean, I thought with 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 as many schools that are leaving the A Sun for a second, I thought Austin P was leaving elsewhere too. But I mean, yeah, like we we honestly don't know. I mean, I want to I want to throw this out there too, just for the sake of covering everything. Uh, in terms of WAC schools for the WAC Sun Alliance, like, do you see um sort of hear me out? I guess I guess you're uh you're you're a native nearby Huntsville. Yeah. Or, or from yeah of nearby Huntsville. I guess Huntsville has some degree of tourist appeal. Do you see? I guess North Alabama inviting one of the the whack schools for this game. Like uh, t- I guess like inviting uh, I guess the folks at uh at St- from St. George, Utah, at Utah Tech, like come and see the glory of Huntsville, the Rocket City. Or is that too um, far an idea? <laughs> no, it's actually not too far of an idea. Um, I I per- once once the WAC and the ASUN are stable enough to where they don't need the alliance, they have announced that once that happens, they are still going to be in a scheduling alliance for like out of conference. So that might be a good early neutral site out of conference game for UNA to to hold. Maybe. maybe all, maybe not doing it every year, but maybe alternating every other year or whatever, um, and hosting, going back and forth between hosting at Brawley Stadium, which 
they should be getting a new stadium soon. I don't know when when they're going to break ga- ground on that. I've seen the the um the renderings of it and it looks beautiful. Um and uh Toyota Field. So like rotating between those two maybe for that whack A Sun Challenge game. Um so I don't know. There it's not out of the reach of for UNA, but I think there's potential to keep it going. Yeah, I mean, for me, I guess I'm I'm a purist. I mean, my law, I mean, my love of history is I guess pretty, pretty known for those that watch or listen to the podcast, a few that do. Uh I just love the allure of of old bowl games where it's like, you know, you're bringing all these snowbirds, all these people to travel to a place they wouldn't travel to ideally. We're like, let's be realistic, you know, people, the people out in uh St. George, Utah, or say uh, Stevensville, Texas, you know, for Tarleton State, have really no realistic, no, no good reason to visit Huntsville, you know, on a whim. And I'm not dissing the city of Huntsville at all. My sister was born in Redstone Arsenal. So, uh, you know, I can't really diss the city. But I mean, they really don't have much of a good reason to visit, you know, and that, that's the position I'm in for a lot of the cities that I visit for games. I don't, I don't have a good reason to visit these games aside from football. So, you know, why not bring back that vintage bowl feel with a game like this? Oh yeah, for sure. And and so, with Huntsville growing as much as it is, bringing college football to the city of Huntsville in an atmosphere like this. Now, granted, it's not FBS, but there's so many other smaller programs like UNA that are always good. Bringing some semblance of college football to the city of Huntsville is going to benefit the city. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it's going to be a pop in um. Uh, college football city at least this year too with the Toyota Field game and with the Alabama A&M on the airport trend that they've been we talked a little bit before I guess off camera before I had about Alabama A&M even though they lose some key pieces uh you know whether it be quarterback a quill glass receiver D Anderson has already made weight well I wouldn't say made waves but made appearances uh in the USFL this spring so yeah like it's it's an exciting time for the city from a college football perspective uh, I guess something you also said uh, earlier, too, about this game being a one-year thing. I mean, for me, being a Holy Cross fan as well, I wouldn't go as far as to say that because Holy Cross's game at, at Polar Park, the uh, the home of the Worcester Red Sox, that sort of like revitalized that city and program, um, at least on, on the weekend that it, that it happened. Um, I mean, I, I was at the game. The game was sold out. Uh, it was an amazing atmosphere to be in. You know, this is the city's new ballpark. After years of uh, years of playing indie ball on the campus of Holy Cross, um, you know, they have this new ballpark in the city, uh, and it just revitalized the the program. And this year, they brought it back. They're playing Bucknell there again this year. So, I mean, again, like I guess it's kind of like a wait and see basis. You know, it's mm-hmm. we don't want to jump the gun in terms of like judging how this thing will go. But uh, again, it's I guess it's kind of a um, it may be I guess like a false sample. If, uh, if they mm-hmm. by playing it against Jacksonville State, a team that um, will be FBS the next year and a team that is also very close by, which could skew, uh, you know, some of the attendance numbers. But, yeah, that's just my perspective on it. Like, I mean, I, I can see it happening past this year if um, the response is great. Yeah, I, like I said, it, it's going to bring uh, – granted, you, a, A&M is here in Huntsville, and they bring in a lot of um, – really good SWAC rivalries so like there's college football in the area but I mean bringing some variety other than HBCU school um the HBCU culture um bringing some variety of like nearby schools like JSU and UNA um and I haven't looked at A&M's schedule but to kind of have that variety of um college football cultures from two different cultures uh is going to benefit uh the city of Huntsville um I mean if A&M has a home game I mean you're bringing in you have those A&M fans you have whoever they're playing you have UNA fans you have JSU fans all in one city for one weekend I mean that's going to bring major business to the city of Huntsville for that just one weekend yeah I mean you mentioned that I think maybe um I think the game was scheduled on October 15th uh, the when it was because a m is in st louis which you talked about also on uh-huh. camera too yeah so i guess to fill the gap of a m not being there but uh yeah on a weekend too where like you can catch two games in one day like you know catch a game at a lewis cruz stadium early in the afternoon and then like the nightcap at toyota field like this i mean that would be absolutely amazing for uh for the rocket city absolutely, absolutely. and i i can't wait i'm still trying to like 
see how my fall schedule is going to be because I, I work with a high school marching band. So <laughs> we, don't, we don't know what our competition schedule is yet. So I'm, I'm going to, I have to wait to see if we're going to have a competition that day because I want to go to this game. I'm not missing this game if I can help it. Oh yeah. I mean, absolutely. I mean, I, I know we talked about this before, but I became a, a North Alabama season ticket holder. You know, of course I'm going to sell most of those tickets except for the Toyota field game. You know, I know you're kind of, kind of burning and cringing inside about, about me being a, a Lions uh, season ticket holder, but it's, it's only, it's only a name for the most part, just so I can go to this game and, uh, and kind of make a profit too. But, um, but yeah, no, I'm excited for it too. I mean, people that, that know me uh, that, you know, read my writing or, or listen to this podcast know that I love me some ballpark football. Uh, I guess it's in my blood as an army fan with all those army Notre Dame games, in Yankee stadium, you know, watching the clips of that as a kid but more ballpark football the better I don't care what anyone says I don't care if they're only going to one side of the field this game is a watermark game not only on the a sun or the wax sun calendar excuse me but also the FCS calendar so I mean I'm, I'm excited for it already yeah it, it, especially with UNA being playoff eligible there's a lot riding on this game oh yeah I mean it, it has a chance to be a signature win in the league too because of course like from an A-Sun perspective, we're looking at divisions, I guess, like I, the A-Sun only, the Wax sun uh, Kennesaw State and JSU are the flagship programs of that league. And, I mean, once JSU leads, it looks like it's going to be KSU's league for, like, the near future. I Actually, not even the near future, like the long-term future, too. I mean, I say that, you know, being biased, being a triple option guy. But, mm-hmm. I mean, Kennesaw State has the student enrollment and they have the, the system to really dominate mm-hmm. that league, even with the WAC teams added in. Yeah, okay, so I somewhat disagree with you. Um, I agree with you as far as Kennesaw State is concerned, but I disagree with you for, like, long-term stuff because you have to remember, you still have Eastern Kentucky, who is probably enrollment-wise next in line behind KSU, and then you have Central Arkansas, and then you have Austin P, and then you have UNA. All of these programs, with the exception of Austin P. um, are storied football programs. Now, granted, Austin P. the past, I would say, five years have improved. I mean, they when they went to their first playoffs, they, they made a run all the way to the quarterfinals. Um, nobody really expected that. I did. I was one of the few that expected that. But, um, yeah, all of these A-Sun teams have so much potential. And this, I, I'm so excited, even though JSU is leaving, I'm so excited to see what the potential of this program or this um, conference has in store for the future. Yeah, I mean, I'm excited too, honestly. And, and part of me wants uh, wants the conference to keep, I don't know how you feel, but they want the I want the conference to keep the, the wax sun kind of look. Because like, I guess that whole intersectional dynamic is cool to me, honestly. <laughs> Um, and then I guess if they can get to, cause they'll be at, cause if UIW is expected to join, they'll be at 10 schools If they can possibly find a way to get a championship game and really like dive into that intersectional mm-hmm. element of this Alliance. Like that would be amazing, honestly. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, I overlooked e- Eastern Kentucky, honestly, that's on me and then central Ar- Arkansas too. They've had some great years. I remember in the Southland. So, uh, it should, it should be balanced too. And then on the WAC side too, Stephen F. Austin, uh, Abilene Christian to just like two, I guess, powerhouses in the Southland in the past. Um, and then UIW, they, I mean, they put up numbers with uh, Cameron Ward. Mm-hmm. Of course, he's gone, but the system's still there. So just a lot of good football to be played in the wax sun. Yeah, I think that's a cool kind of setup. I, I personally think both of these leagues need to, uh, I was talking to uh, some other FCS people about this. I think they should combine and have separate divisions like a white division and a sun division and you bring up the championship game if they if that conference if all those teams can start their schedule in week zero they would have that extra week before selection sunday to have that championship game to determine who gets the aq so i think that's a a really good setup i don't know if anybody is smart enough to figure that out at the NCAA level or on the conference uh, executive boards. Uh, But I think that would be a much better setup for the longevity of both of these uh, conferences. Yeah. I always need to think about week zero, like you bring up week zero, you bring the exposure it brings. It's a light slate. A lot of those games probably will be on ESPN networks, you know, maybe linearly, 
or that's I don't know if that's a word, maybe on linear television, whether it's ESPNU, uh, News Plus or two. Um, but they'll be on TV. They'll be, I mean, there'll be exposure mm-hmm. for those games too. So it's good from exposure perspective and also too from re- a revenue perspective, because having that extra, that one extra game of TV in- inventory is huge. I mean, especially for an FCS conference where I guess the TV money isn't as great. I mean, where like other conferences, if you have a championship, get a conference championship game, like, yeah, it's a dent that adds a dent to your, uh, uh, your TV money. But for FCS conference, like it could, it's a sizable amount into it or adds a mm-hmm. sizable amount to it relatively. So, I mean, yeah, that's, that's a great idea that I just never thought of. Yeah. The only thing that would, that would um put a, dagger into this i guess you could say is the fcs only plays 11 games during the regular season so you have three out of conference games and if you have enough to have eight conference games you have eight conference games so in order to have a championship game all of these teams are going to have to probably eliminate uh one of their out of conference games in order to have that championship game and be able to play a full like full 11 games like the the ending the ending and like the setup of this is probably what's going to prevent this from happening because there's just a lot that goes into it um but i mean just talking about it and having it on paper it looks like a great idea uh whether it it uh will happen that is to be determined yeah exactly i mean shoot um that's up to the consultants and uh, I guess conference leadership to see if it will happen. But hey, we provided the idea. If they if they want a framework, you know, they can they can look to this podcast. Uh, Absolutely. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think I've I think I've covered everything that I wanted to ask and, and talk about today. Brandon, do you have anything else to add? Uh, other than if you want to hear more about a Sun football, follow a Sun around the a Sun on Twitter and Instagram. Um, if you want to hear more about J, not just JSU football, but JSU sports, follow uh, Cocky Nation on Instagram and Twitter uh, with the handle Cocky underscore Nation. Absolutely, and I'll be putting those in the description and uh, doing the the shout outs on Twitter and Instagram for all those accounts um brandon it's been a pleasure uh you know thanks for discussing this you know it was, it was honestly fun uh and I, and I learned a bit about the a sun so thank you not a problem i i the first time we did this i really enjoyed it so i'm glad I, you brought me back to do another podcast yeah and uh you mentioned the first time like we talked about the first time about about the jsu uh una rivalry being a neutral site game so i felt like we kind of we kind of predicted it a little um just, when just a little bit out. just a little bit yeah just a little bit um but so yeah even more reason to tune into to both of our podcasts um so i guess that'll wrap things up and uh until next time everyone peace love and soul